Welcome back to Aero 1020, Theory of Flight, presentation number 14 on stability and control. In this presentation, we'll cover the basics of stability and control. We'll review the three axes of movement around the aircraft and stability around these three axes. And then we'll review the left turning tendencies of the aircraft and we'll talk about adverse yaw. There are three axes of movement around the aircraft. All of the axes pass through the center of gravity. There's the longitudinal axis from the nose of the aircraft back to the tail. The vertical axis, which is a straight line vertically up through the center of gravity. And the lateral axis, which is from wingtip to wingtip. Movement around the longitudinal axis is called roll. Movement around the lateral axis is called pitch. And movement around the vertical axis is called yaw. The definition of stability is the tendency of an airplane to resist movement away from its flight path. A well-designed airplane is both maneuverable and stable. The more stable an airplane is, the less maneuverable it is. And the more maneuverable an airplane is, the less stable. An inherently stable airplane requires less effort from the pilot to control the aircraft. We'll discuss the center of gravity of an airplane and the weight and balance calculations in more detail in a later presentation. But for now, remember that the aircraft moves around the three different axes centered around the center of gravity. So each axis passes through the center of gravity and the airplane moves about that axis. The center of lift, as you remember, is the uh, point on the airfoil where lift is concentrated. The average lift is greatest. And the center of lift is usually located in back of the center of gravity. This creates what's called a nose down pitching moment. The aircraft has a tendency to nose down. To counteract that nose down pitching moment, the aircraft is designed with a tail down force provided by the horizontal stabilizer. And here's an illustration of the nose down pitching moment counteracted by the tail down force. That's very important to remember. Longitudinal stability is stability around the lateral axis. So that can be a little confusing. You would think that that would be lateral stability. But longitudinal stability is stability around the lateral axis. So longitudinal stability is pitch stability. Longitudinal stability or pitch stability is provided by the restoring aerodynamic force of the horizontal stabilizer on the empennage or the tail of the aircraft. If the aircraft, for example, should encounter a gust of wind and the nose pitch up as a result, the angle of attack between the relative wind and the cord line of the horizontal stabilizer will bring the tail back up and restore the aircraft to its original flight path. If a gust of wind should cause the nose to pitch down, the same restorative aerodynamic force from the horizontal stabilizer would tend to bring the tail back down and the nose back up to restore the aircraft to its original flight path. So here is an illustration of longitudinal stability. Again, longitudinal stability is around the lateral axis. And longitudinal stability is greatly influenced by the position of the center of gravity. The center of gravity is at the forward limit. That means there's more distance between the center of gravity and the tail down force provided by the horizontal stabilizer on the tail of the aircraft. Because that's a longer arm, longer distance, 
from the CG back to the tail down force, the aircraft is actually more stable when the center of gravity is maximum forward. When the center of gravity is closer to the aft limit, it's closer to the tail down force. In other words, there's less distance between the center of gravity and the tail down force. And because of the, that shorter arm, the aircraft is less stable when the center of gravity is close to the aft limit. If the center of gravity is actually behind the aft limit or past the aft CG limit, that's an extremely dangerous and highly unstable condition. If the aircraft should stall, the pilot would be unable to recover from the stall by pushing the nose forward. So again, it's important to remember Longitudinal stability is stability around the lateral axis of the aircraft, and that is pitch stability. When the aircraft is balanced, the condition is known as trimmed. So another definition of stability would be the airplane's tendency to return to its trimmed condition after it's disturbed. Now there are two types of stability, static stability and dynamic stability. Static stability is the initial tendency of the aircraft to return to its trimmed condition. Dynamic stability is the tendency of the aircraft to return to its trimmed condition over time. We can illustrate the concept of positive static stability by using a, a ball inside of a bowl uh, if you move the ball to the outside edge of the bowl, the ball tends to fall back toward its original position in the center. That can be compared to positive static stability. If we were to place that ball on a flat surface and move that ball from its original position, say on the left in this case, to the right, the ball would not have a tendency to move back to its original position. It would just stay in its new position. That's called neutral static stability. Now if we turn that bowl upside down and we place the ball at the top and then pushed it off to the side, that ball would tend to go further and further from its original position that can be compared to negative static stability. If we disturb an aircraft's pitch and it has a tendency over time to return to its original pitch, that's called positive dynamic stability. If we disturb an aircraft in pitch and it tends to never return to its original flight path, then that is neutral dynamic stability. And finally, if an aircraft's pitch is disturbed and it gets further and further away from its original flight path over time, that is negative dynamic stability. It is dynamically unstable. The three graphs shown on the left side of this slide represent neutral, negative, and positive stability. So which one shows neutral longitudinal stability? Well, that would be uh, graph C at the bottom of the illustration uh, because the line, if you think of this line as representing altitude, uh, the aircraft never returns back to its original altitude. It just stays on um, its disturbed path. The graph labeled B is negative dynamic stability. Over time, the gyration gets bigger. And then the graph labeled A is positive dynamic stability. Over time, the gyrations get smaller and the aircraft eventually returns to its original flight path. Now we just discussed longitudinal stability and how longitudinal stability is stability around the lateral axis. Well, lateral stability is stability around the longitudinal axis. So lateral stability is roll stability. The center of gravity not only 
changes longitudinal stability but can also have an effect on lateral stability or roll stability. For example, more weight on the left or the right side of the aircraft could affect roll stability. More fuel in the left tank versus the right tank could also affect lateral stability. So again, it's very important to remember longitudinal stability is stability around the lateral axis or pitch stability. Lateral stability is stability around the longitudinal axis or roll stability. Now there are four left turning tendencies. The aircraft has a tendency to turn to the left, especially at high power settings at a high angle of attack. Three of those left turning tendencies apply to aircraft that have a tricycle style landing gear. The fourth one only applies to an aircraft with a conventional landing gear or a tail dragger. So we'll discuss the three that apply to the aircraft with a tricycle style landing gear. The first left turning tendency is called P factor. And P factor occurs because the propeller on most American made aircraft rotates in a clockwise direction when seen from the pilot station. Because of this, the left side of the propeller uh, as it rotates is moving up and the right side of the propeller as it rotates is moving down. When the aircraft is at a high angle of attack, as in a climb, the angle of attack of the downward or descending blade on the right side of the aircraft is actually larger than the angle of attack of the upward moving blade on the left side of the aircraft. Because the angle of attack on the right side of the aircraft is greater, that side of the propeller generates more thrust and tends to yaw the aircraft to the left. So as you can see, the descending side of the blade has a much larger angle of attack than the ascending side, or the left side of the blade. The next left turning tendency is called torque, and torque is due to Newton's third law. Remember, Newton's third law is for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So because the propeller is rotating in a clockwise direction when seen from the pilot station, the aircraft that's attached to the propeller wants to roll to the left. That's called torque. The third left turning tendency is called spiraling slipstream. And spiraling slipstream occurs because of the rotation of the prop causing the propeller uh, wash to rotate around the aircraft's fuselage until it gets to the tail where it tends to hit the left side of the vertical stabilizer. This ends up yawing the aircraft to the left. Now earlier when we were looking at lift and how an aircraft turns, we saw that an aircraft that is banked converts some of the vertical lift that keeps the aircraft uh, suspended in the air to horizontal lift. And that horizontal lift is what actually turns the aircraft. And that horizontal lift is opposed by centrifugal force. If the horizontal component of the lift is not balanced against the centrifugal force, you could end up with either a slipping or a skidding turn. How can you tell if you're in a slipping or a skidding turn? Well, you can look at the ball and the inclinometer at the bottom of the turn coordinator on the aircraft instrument panel. If you're banking the airplane to the right and the ball and the inclinometer falls to the inside of the turn, that means you're not using enough right rudder to create that centrifugal force to force that ball to the center of the inclinometer. So the saying is step on the ball. If you see that ball to the inside of the turn, that means you're not using enough rudder, in this case right rudder. So you would step on the right rudder to increase the centrifugal force to get that ball to the center of the inclinometer. If you're in a skidding turn, as illustrated by the aircraft in the center, the ball will be on the outside of the turn. So this aircraft is banking to the right, 
and the ball in the inclinometer is all the way to the left. That means you're using too much right rudder. You're creating too much centrifugal force. So that is forcing that ball all the way to the outside of the turn. So you need to release some of the right rudder in order to get that ball to the center. A coordinated turn is shown on the right side of this illustration. That ball should be right in the center. So this is a coordinated, balanced turn. So remember, a slipping turn is when the ball in the inclinometer is on the inside of the turn. A skidding turn is when the ball is to the outside of the turn. Now, dihedral is an important term to remember when it comes to lateral stability. Remember, lateral stability is stability around the longitudinal axis. So that's roll stability. Dihedral is designed into a wing when the wings are attached to the fuselage at a positive angle, as shown in this illustration. When an aircraft is disturbed and it rolls to the right, as in this illustration, the aircraft tends to side slip in the direction of the roll. And because of that side slip, that sets up a relative lateral velocity of air from the wingtip to the wing root. And because of that, there's an increased amount of lift generated on the right side, which will bring that wing back up, and that increases the lateral stability. So dihedral is one way that we can increase lateral stability or roll stability. In this figure, you see an aircraft that has been disturbed and starts to roll to the left. Because it's rolling to the left, there is a sideways component of relative airflow, and that sideways component creates a greater angle of attack on the downward wing than is on the upward wing. Because of the greater angle of attack on that downward wing, there's more lift being generated. And that tends to correct the uninvited roll. Now in a later presentation, we'll discuss high speed flight and why swept back wings are more appropriate in an aircraft that flies at high speeds. But swept back wings are also uh, one way that we can increase lateral stability. Remember, lateral stability is around the longitudinal axis, so that's roll stability. When an aircraft with swept back wings rolls inadvertently, that creates more drag on the upward wing, which forces the aircraft to yaw, in this case, to the left. And because the right wing in this illustration is more perpendicular to the wind, that's creating more lift on the right side, which creates more drag, which would yaw the airplane back to the right. In addition to the increased drag on the right wing, yawing the airplane back to the right, there's increased lift as well, which would tend to correct the inadvertent roll. Now in this figure, we see the same swept back aircraft from the top and the aircraft has inadvertently rolled to the right. So the right wing is down, the left wing is up. Since the left wing is up, it's creating more lift, and remember, lift creates uh, induced drag. So the more lift the wing is creating, the more induced drag it's creating, and that yaws the airplane to the left. In the meantime, the right wing, because of the swept wing design, is more perpendicular to the relative airflow. Because that wing is more perpendicular to the relative airflow, it is now creating more lift. Since it's creating more lift, it's also creating more drag. So that tends to yaw the nose back to the right. In addition, because it's creating more lift, the airplane tends to roll back to the left. Now directional stability is stability around the vertical axis, or yaw stability. Now if the aircraft inadvertently yaws to the left, as illustrated in this figure, the action of the relative airflow against the vertical stabilizer on the empennage or the tail tends to yaw the airplane back to the right, correcting the uninvited yaw. Not only the action of the relative wind against the vertical stabilizer tends to correct an uninvited yaw, but also the relative wind against the side of the aircraft also 
tends to correct an uninvited yaw. That's called keel effect. In addition to correcting an uninvited yaw, keel effect also helps with lateral stability, which, as you recall, is roll stability, or stability around the longitudinal axis. So directional stability is stability around the vertical axis, or yaw stability. And that's greatly affected by the vertical stabilizer. Now tying this all together, remember longitudinal stability is stability around the lateral axis, and that's pitch stability. And that's completely separate from lateral and directional stability. Lateral and directional stability are tied together, and the designers of an airplane have to strike a compromise between lateral and directional stability. So again, remember, lateral stability is stability around the longitudinal axis, and that's roll stability. And that is tied to directional stability, which is stability around the vertical axis, or yaw stability. So in this figure, you see an aircraft that is rolling to the left. Because the aircraft is rolling to the left, it's also side slipping to the left which creates more lift on the left side. And because there's more lift being generated on the left side, there's more drag that yaws the aircraft in the direction of the uh, downward wing. Now, not only does roll cause yaw, but yaw causes roll. As in this figure, you can see the aircraft is yawing to the left. Because the aircraft is yawing to the left, the right wing is traveling through the air faster than the left wing. And remember, velocity has an exponential effect on lift. So if the right wing is traveling through the air faster than the left wing, it's going to generate more lift and roll the aircraft to the left. You can see this demonstrated on a swept wing aircraft in a phenomenon called Dutch roll. Because roll causes yaw and yaw causes roll, you can see, especially in swept wing aircraft, the tendency for the aircraft to oscillate between rolling and yawing. And it goes back and forth, and usually the oscillations become smaller and smaller until they eventually stop. If the oscillations don't stop, if they continue, then that's an aircraft with neutral dynamic directional stability. And here's a link to a video that will demonstrate exactly how an aircraft behaves in a Dutch roll. Well, that's the end of presentation number 14 on stability and control. The next presentation will be a discussion about the different types of drag.